Hey, my name is Austin. In this video, I'm going to talk about what is a delta lake, why are people using it, and how it can be beneficial to you. Let's get to it. Hello, my name is Austin Liable. I work for a company called Pragmatic Works and we do training on products for Microsoft like Azure, like the Power Platform. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a new concept on the scene in data called the Delta Lake. But before we get to that, we wanna do some level setting and go through and better understand exactly how Delta works, how it's utilized, and what are the different solutions you use it with. This is going to be a five episode video series where we're going to dive deep into the realm of Delta, hopefully letting you know what it is, how you can use it, where you can use it, and then go through and show you some examples of how to use that as well and build some pretty cool things with it. So let's start talking a little bit more about what is Delta to start with. But before we do that, we first have to talk about what is a data lake. So to begin the conversation around Delta, we really need to start talking about what is a data lake to begin with. A data lake is a large centralized repository that allows organizations to store different types of structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data at scale. So it's a storage architecture that's designed to store raw data in its native format without the need for prior structuring or modeling. This means that data lakes can store large, vast amounts of data from different sources, such as databases, social media, IoT devices, or many, many more, making it possible to use the data for various analytics and machine learning purposes. Data lakes are often used in what we call big data environments, where there is a need to store and analyze large amounts of data. So when compared and contrasted to something like a traditional data warehouse, the benefits to a data lake would be flexibility. A data lake can store a wide variety of data types, including structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. And this makes it much more flexible than your traditional data warehouse, which typically only stores structured data. Uh, also another benefit is scalability. Data lakes are highly scalable and can store vast amounts of data without requiring any schema or data modeling beforehand. This makes it very easy to go through and accommodate large growing data volumes and handle complex data process tasks as well. There's also a cost effectiveness, right? We all want to save some money. Data lakes can be very cost effective when compared with a data warehouse. Uh, they can be run on a very low cost storage option, uh, which is a cloud object storage. That means you or an organization can go through and store large amounts of data without incurring large significant costs. Now there's also this concept known as agility. With a data lake, data can be ingested and analyzed very quickly without the need for extensive ETL or extract transform load processes. This means that data can be analyzed in real time and enable organizations to quickly change their business needs. And also the integration benefits. Data lakes are often more interoperable uh, than a data warehouse and it allows for seamless data integration with a wide range range of data processing tools and platforms, and that makes it easier to access and analyze data using different tools and techniques. Now, why are we talking about a data lake? I thought this was a Delta video. Well, that is because the Delta Lake is a storage layer on top of your data lake. So you can't really go and you can't create something called a Delta Lake uh, in Azure. But what you can do is utilize Delta on top of your existing data lake. A Delta Lake goes through and extends Parquet data files with file-based transaction logs for ACID transactions. A Parquet file, if you don't know what that is, is a columnar storage file that's optimized for large-scale processing. It's an Apache Parquet file uh, made by uh, the great people over at Apache. Uh, it is designed to improve query performance and reduce the storage footprints of data, particularly 
for analytics and big data workloads. So data lakes are typically populated through multiple processes and pipelines, some of which include writing data concurrently in reads. Prior to the Delta Lake, the addition of these different ACID transactions, a data engineer would have to go through a manual error-prone process to ensure data integrity, to make sure your data hasn't, uh, doesn't have any errors, right? So Delta Lake brings these familiar ACID transactions to data lakes, and it provides something known as serializability, the strongest level of isolation layers. Delta Lake also brings something known as time travel. Pretty cool term, right? Time travel with Delta Lake is a feature that allows data teams to go query data as it existed at a very specific point in time. And it's achieved by maintaining something called a version history of the data changes so that a user can go back and query and access previous versions of the data. Delta Lake stores data in a versioned Parquet format, and each version is timestamped with the date when the right operation was performed. With the time travel feature, a data engineer or a data analyst can easily query a specific version of the data or compute differences or go and compare differences between versions without having to manually create and maintain multiple copies of the data. So time travel can be especially useful for data analysis and auditing as it allows your different data teams to go and track changes over time and perform trend analysis. It can also be very useful in data recovery as it allows teams to go back and recover previous versions of the data uh, in case of some sort of data corruption or other issues. Now, how is data utilized and how is Delta utilized specifically? Well, your Delta Lake is going to run on top of something known as Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an open source distributed computing system designed for processing large scale data. Remember, data lakes are meant for big data and Apache Spark is a great way to go and provision that. It is built on top of something known as a Hadoop distributed file system, HDFS, and it can go and access data from a wide range of sources. So Spark provides a simple, powerful programming model for distributed processing of large data sets across clusters of computers and supports a wide range of data processing tasks, including batch processing, machine learning, and more. It achieves something known as, uh, through the highest performance possible, uh, of a DAG or Directed Achillic Graph uh, execution engine, and it's able to perform in-memory computations using that. Spark also provides a various uh, amount of high-level APIs for programming in Java, Scala, Python, R, as well as a wide range of libraries used for machine learning, SQL streaming, graph processing as well, and also Delta. Now, where could I potentially go through and use Delta? How would I go through and manage Delta? You can use a Delta Lake with Apache Spark compute in Azure HD Insight, uh, Azure Databricks, Azure Synapse Analytics, which is where I typically go and prefer to work with Delta. But Delta is, a Delta is often associated with a data lake house architecture. And we're going to be discussing what is a data lake house later in this series as well and uh, kind of give a high level overview of what the data lake house is. Uh, it's kind of the combination of ACID transactions and data governance of data warehouses with the flexibility and cost efficiency of a data lake to enable businesses uh, to allow them to do intel business intelligence processes, machine learning, uh, all their data, not just portions of the data. So the data lake house keeps your data in a massively scalable cloud storage object in open source data standards, allowing you to go through and use your data however and wherever you want. So just to give an overview of what we talked about, right? Delta Lake is an open source data storage layer that goes and provides a reliability, scalability, and performance to a data lake. It provides ACID transactions, schema enforcement, and the time travel capabilities. Uh, and it uses that on top of Apache Spark or Databricks. Delta Lake is designed to handle a large scale of data workloads, enables users to easily have data 
data versioning, auditing, and management as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. We're going to continue to go down the realm of Delta. This is just an overview explanation of what it is. In the next video, we're going to go through and create something called a Delta table, and it's going to create a file in our data lake that's going to be a Delta file. If you're interested in learning more about Delta, definitely check out our on-demand learning platform for Pragmatic Works. We have content around Delta on there and we're looking to add more in the very near future. So stay tuned for that as well. If you're interested, you can use my code Austin30. You can find that in the comments below uh, and go and uh, click through the link and uh, see about signing up for our on-demand learning service. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.